In the words of Rob Stewart, you're told your whole life when you're a kid, sharks are dangerous. You're warned about venturing too far into the ocean, but then, finally, you're underwater and you see the thing that you were taught your whole life to fear, and it's perfect, and it doesn't want to hurt you, and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, and your whole world changes. Sharks are atop the food chain throughout the world's oceans. They are predators, hunting fish and fighting for survival on a daily basis, and have manned the dark depths of the ocean for over 400 million years now. As ice ages and dinosaurs came and went, as animal populations died off or evolved, and as Darwin's theory of evolution continued to prove true, sharks have remained a dominant aquatic species. Conventional wisdom has led the general public to believe that sharks are vicious creatures. We see sharks as killers of the blue and have ignored all the good they have done for our oceans. Part of this is due to a lack of knowledge. The very symbol of working danger, that is the shark. It's very kind animals. This means sweet. Shark actually is not kind animals. No? You don't believe you go to, go to see the shark whether you eat you or not? No, the shark is not. The shark's not. It's very, very fierce. Yeah. Very fierce. You see this, the teeth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. but I saw. You try swimming with a shark like that in eight feet of water, and you'll find it. I've saved a lot of lives. Believe me, if it wasn't for me and what I've done the last 25 years, there'd be a lot more people killed. Many are unaware of the impact sharks have on the deep blue and consequently our planet. But mainly, this can be blamed on a media depiction of sharks that has negatively impacted them. Three people were hurt Saturday in another shark attack. The next few decades or so, sharks are most likely to be wiped off the face of the earth. Why? Why has the world's shark population decreased by over 90%? Why has potentially the most vital aspect of the ocean ecosystem all but disappeared? The answer? Shark finning. Shark finning refers to the act of cutting the fins off a shark and then throwing it back into the ocean. These sharks die immediately, almost 100% of the time. They bleed out, get eaten by other predators, or drown due to their inability to swim and breathe without fins. Shark finning has become increasingly hard to monitor. The shark finning industry, mostly illegal, is valued anywhere between 500 million and 1 billion US dollars. The industry has flourished behind the scenes as authorities worldwide have been paid off to allow the illegal activity. In addition, oceans are simply too vast to monitor, and rules and laws with regards to fishing in international waters are scarcely enforced and relatively vague. Lastly, there is not a large enough group of people actually trying to help protect shark. How come everybody's ignoring that the Veradero one violated Guatemalan law, Costa Rican law, and international law, and we have the evidence on that. They cannot take sharks for fins alone. They cannot fish in Guatemalan waters. They cannot fish outside of Costa Rica without a permit. That's illegal. Everybody's ignoring Shark fin soup, a delicacy across Asia, has become more and more popular in the past decade. It is now served at weddings, business gatherings, family gatherings, and even in restaurants on a daily basis. This demand for shark fin soup, along with issues with regards to international waters, have allowed the shark finning industry to flourish, drastically diminishing the world's shark populations and damaging the ocean ecosystem. It's easy for governments to monitor oceans within their boundaries. The issue is protecting sharks in international waters. Otherwise known as the high seas, international waters are waterways that are not within any country's international boundaries, which are approximately 200 nautical miles. Most of the time, a ship sailing the high seas is under the jurisdiction of its flag country, in other words, the country with which it is registered. 
Where this becomes a problem is that many countries rely heavily on the high-valued shark finning industries and will allow finning to happen. Treaties have been proposed and agreements have been made with certain countries, but the ocean is simply too large to monitor correctly and in all honesty, countries do not care that much about ocean activities. They are more preoccupied with other issues and therefore our waters are being ignored. Shark fins, contrary to popular belief, have absolutely no nutritional value or even taste. They are solely used as a method to show wealth. It is a Chinese tradition to have shark fin soup at weddings, even though today many choose to forego eating it due to the increased pressure to protect sharks. It is an unnecessary delicacy that has major effects on the environment. This is not simply an issue of declining shark populations and protecting the rights of a 450 million year old species. When a top predator is removed from a food chain, overpopulation occurs in the lower species. Phytoplankton are at the bottom of the ocean's food chain. In short, they are eaten by most fish, and those fish are usually eaten by sharks. Many wonder why this is relevant at all. Well, phytoplankton also produce approximately 70% of our planet's oxygen. With sharks gone, the ocean's fish populations would expand to a point where phytoplankton would have no hope for survival. With phytoplankton gone, the oxygen levels on our planet would decrease, threatening human life as we know it. Dr. Peter Kimley, a UC Davis marine biologist often referred to as Dr. Hammerhead, was once diving off the coast of La Paz, Mexico and Baja, California, when he saw something that changed his life. A school of hammerhead sharks, too numerous to count, swam right by him as he waded underneath the water. He stated, it was like Grand Central Station in New York City at rush hour. All these sharks, hundreds of them. Over the next decade and a half, he studied the area and concluded that sharks used the area to reproduce. This was in 1979, when sharks weren't being heavily hunted. 31 years later, in 2010, Kimley concluded that there were approximately 219 sharks throughout the waters surrounding California, and maybe 130 in Mexico. That's less than 400 sharks in California and Mexico combined. The oceans were, as he said, crumbling from above. There are multiple solutions that have been proposed over the years. There's been a rise in awareness throughout Asia as some hotels and restaurants have stopped serving shark fin soup. The issue, on the other hand, needs to be dealt with right now and we don't have enough time to wait for the whole world to get on the same page with regards to bans on shark finning and shark fin soup. In my opinion, it is important to protect the areas where sharks reproduce. As stated earlier, the entirety of the world's oceans is simply too vast to monitor efficiently. We will never be able to make sure shark finning is not happening all throughout the planet. But we need to track sharks, as many scientists have been doing throughout the years, find out where they convene to reproduce, and heavily monitor those areas with watch boats. Heavily enforced bans can be put into effect and consequences for shark finning in these areas can be severe. In protecting the reproduction sites, we can start to rebuild the shark population that has decreased by over 90%. Sharks have traveled to Asia, but not through the waters. They have been served on silver platters for reasons based on showing off wealth. In 2011, one study estimated over 75 million sharks were finned per year. Sharks in the Galapagos Reef are now completely extinct. Hammerheads in the Mediterranean Sea are now completely extinct. In 33 years, the Atlantic Ocean has seen a 97% decline in tiger sharks. Multiple shark populations off the coast of Australia have seen a decline of over 97% in less than 25 years. Scientists are now lucky to find a single shark in a month-long stint at sea. It is now past the point where sharks are the sole issue. If we want to save the oceans, the creatures living in the oceans, as well as the human race, we need to keep the most prized ocean predator from vanishing from the deep, and we need to do it now.